What's up welders? Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul, thanks for joining me. And today we're going to start a small series on basic fabricating uh, techniques. If you're a 20 year fabricator, go watch something else because you're not going to learn anything here. But if you're somebody who's new to the game, wants to uh, build yourself a workbench or a welding cart, or something along those lines stick around I think we've got something here for you so we're gonna break this up into a couple different uh, segments the first one being uh, building with angle the second one is going to be uh, tubing square tubing rectangular tubing and the third one is going to be fabricating with aluminum so those three things uh, will be in our series and we're going to talk today about building with angle and the reason we're starting there is because I think that angle is one of the most versatile things that you can use at home to fabricate with. This is inch and a half by uh, one eighth mild steel angle. We're going to talk about different ways to fit it up so that we can get perfect 90 degree corners whether it be mitering or notching we're going to talk about um, getting perfect parallel joints and choosing a process so let's get started with some basic fit up all right folks i cut up a couple pieces of this angle here so we can play with it now this metal has been provided by onlinemetals.com you can check them out online for any metal needs you may have the first joint we're going to talk about is basically going to be a 90 degree corner. And we always want to have our good friend the square with us because we want everything to be straight. Now, in order to weld up that joint without this overlap, which is going to make everything look crummy and extremely amateurish, we've got to do something. Now, the first way we're going to talk about doing this is mitering it. If we cut 45 degree miters, on each of these bottom pieces, whoopsies, and actually got it from where it needs to be always got to take into account your pen so place your pen right there in the corner like that and then we'll just butt right up to it like that so if we cut those corner pieces out such as that we should be able to line these up pretty accurately now there's going to be a number of ways to do that um, let's explore a couple of them we can do the first one with a standard cutoff wheel which is the basic tool that most people are going to have at their shop so let's do that one like that Alright, the second method we're going to talk about is to use a plasma cutter. I don't have the steadiest hands in the world with the plasma cutter, so uh a little bit of grinding is going to be necessary in this case, and it's a good idea anyway. You want to get the smoothest joints you possibly can. And I'm finishing this up at the angle that we've mitered the corner so that everything butts up nice. All right, regardless of what method you choose, after your pieces are cut, they need to be cleaned up. All 
all right, I sped this up four times. Um, no need to watch me playing with the flap disc. Um, if you're going to Tigger MIG, you want to make sure you're down to bright, shiny metal. Stick is a little bit more forgiving. All right, your pieces are cut and cleaned up and are now ready to be joined. I would suggest the first thing that you do is you get a square and you make sure that your cuts are proper and everything is copacetic. And you're going to see on mine, this is where she's lining up square a little bit. So we've got a very, very slight gap there. So our next choice is going to be what method are we going to use to weld it and what is its use going to be because that's going to help us determine the method. All right, so let's consider what we're building. Let's say, for instance, in this case, we are building a welding cart and a welder is going to be sitting up here. Say this thing is, you know, 14 inches wide by 20 inches long. So this is going to be the top of our cart and it is going to have to be supported in some method. Well, there's a number of different ways that we can do that. It could be supported by welding tubing to the side, tubing to the bottom. And that can be... <laughs> oh, this isn't working out right, but this is just for shows and goes. So. It could be that round tubing I just showed you. It could be a piece of square tubing. Or, just pretend that's upside down. Since we're talking about angle, it could be another piece of angle welded in there, something like that. Now, depending on where you're attaching your supports is one way to help select the process you're going to use. If your supports are going to go on the outside like this, whether it's square tube, round tube, whatever, I'd put a stick weld through that, a stick weld on the other side, and be done with it. If you're going to have something on the outside like this that needs to be pretty, then I would go with a TIG weld. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't stick weld it or MIG weld it. You're just going to have a lot more to uh, clean and dress up. So let's make our decision for this and say we're going to stick weld it from the inside only and then we're going to put our angle on the back side for a support. So let's move forward from there. We'll get ready. We'll tack this thing up and we'll stick weld it out with some 7018. All right, we've got our parts in place. We've got some clamps on them and we've got some magnets and we're trying to keep everything exactly where we want. So then our next thing is going to be tacking it up. We're probably going to go with three tacks. We're going to put one there, one there, and one there. And we'll do this with two final welds. We're always going to start in the center moving towards the unrestrained edge. So we'll do a weld here in the horizontal position and a weld here in the vertical up position. All right, I've got my machine set up. I like about 85 amps for a 332nd uh, 7018. All right, we got our joint set, we got our rod ready. We're going to be making three tacks. Now, 7018s are notoriously hard to restart after you stop because they form a little slag covering over the end. So I've got a file handy to scrape it off just in case. Get my gloves on. There's one, two, whoopsies, three. Let me get that one a little better.
our stick welded piece and as you can see it's in a pretty good form there Now it's hard to tell if it's absolutely square with that bead in there, but it looks pretty square. We can check the outside, that's for sure. And there's no light in there. That's a nice square joint. Grind that, file that, do whatever you want. And then I just like to get a file. knock off any sharp corners. Yeah, you do that four times, you got yourself a shelf for your welds. All right, now we're back to our second method for joining these corner pieces for a 90 degree angle. And this is the method that I'm probably going to use most of all because I think it yields a really nice result. And that is just to notch we'll just notch that out line everything up and weld it Since that was a freehand cut and I don't have the steadiest hands in the world, we're going to need a little cleanup here. You should use a little cleanup anyway, even if you do have the steadiest hands in the world. Knock that dross off there, get everything clean. And we're going to TIG weld this, so we want to be down to bright, shiny metal, of course. Alright folks, we are back with the last part of the process here and that is going to be welding this square joint up after having taken a notch out of it so that everything fits up real nice. Now we're going to tack it from the inside but weld it from the outside so that we have a nice outside corner joints there. Let me get my helmet And we'll get some tacks going in here. Alright, now that we got it tacked, we can weld her up. Alright boys and girls, 
there's our corner joint that's been TIG welded. And if you wondered why I did that, it was uh, just because TIG is my favorite process. There's no real advantage over it. It's not cleaner than any other process. And actually, it's a little bit slower. But I cleaned up the outside edges of this. And the reason I did that was if we were going to use this for our mythical welding cart that we're building, we now have a perfect fit to put on our vertical support piece. So that's it for this episode of Adventures in Welding. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for Online Metals for supplying the metals for this demonstration. I hope I see you next time. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share.